thank you everyone for your good wishes um the ordination service was really very beautiful and moving yesterday um obviously quite unusual it was the 11th ordination service that the diocese had done in the cathedral um, since Friday. The priestings were on Friday uh, when uh, Mikey, uh, Laura, our team vicar's husband, was priested and then Saturday and Sunday were deaconing so both bishops, all the cathedral staff, archdeacons and uh, the vocations uh, team from the diocese did an amazing job. It was epic. Um, but very, uh, very beautiful and a real privilege um, to be part of that. Um, so today we'll be using um, our liturgy for morning prayer in the days after Trinity, but we will be introducing a new morning prayer liturgy at some point, um, possibly when we begin reading the Gospel of Mark next week, but um, I'm going to speak to Miranda and Laura about that. Um, but we'll continue using our morning prayer for the days after Trinity today. And um, we'll be reading Daniel chapter 9 verses 4 to 19 and Psalm 39. So if you have a copy of the liturgy, please do join in. Um, but otherwise, please just listen, uh, pray with us and join in our reflections on the readings when the time comes. We'll begin with a moment of quiet. We gather today as one body, from the many places where God has given us shelter for this season. Come, Holy Trinity of Love, gather us, inspire us, humble us. Make us dream your dreams for us. Inflame us with your love for the world. Give us your vision for a new future. Amen. And so we come to... Um, our moment where we light a candle to, to mark our time uh, and space together as sacred. And uh, Kath has asked, is that a new icon on the desk? That's right. And I was going to mention this, actually, because I've, I've got two candles today to light. Uh, one for my icon cross, uh, which was bought by for, for me as a leaving gift from St. Nick's, the church where I did my training placement. And... This is an icon of St. Michael that my wife, Christine, had commissioned to be written to celebrate the ordination. So I'm, I'm beyond grateful. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Um, my, um, the Feast of St. Michael and All Angels is tomorrow, but the ordination is in the um, season of Michaelmas. Um, so as a Michaelmas ordination, Christine had this beautiful icon of St. Michael and it was written by um, Ian J. A. Knowles, an iconographer based in Cheltenham. Um, so happy to do a plug for um, such a beautiful uh, icon writer, uh, produces many beautiful icons. And so please, if you have a candle, do join us in lighting it to mark our time together as a sacred time and space. So let us pray. Our light from the same source, our breath from the same spirit, we are in you and you in us. Amen. So we pray our collect and our collect is the collect for the 16th Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. O Lord, we beseech you mercifully to hear the prayers of your people who call upon you and grant that they may both perceive and know what things they ought to do and also may have grace and power faithfully to fulfil them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so we pause to notice the companions we have on this way. People of all genders and none. 
and all living creatures, all differently bodied, all beautifully imperfect, all searching, working, rejoicing, suffering. May the circle of our world and our attention expand. May we welcome the many faces of truth, the many bodies that bear your grace. May the circle of our world and our attention expand. Amen. So, um, we will read our psalm, which is Psalm 39. And uh, again, I've, I've chosen this because I think it, it speaks quite interestingly into the reading from Daniel that follows. So, Psalm 39. I said, I will keep watch over my ways, so that I offend not with my tongue. I will guard my mouth with a muzzle, while the wicked are in my sight. So I held my tongue and said nothing. I kept silent, but to no avail. My distress increased, my heart grew hot within me. While I mused, the fire was kindled, and I spoke out with my tongue. Lord, let me know my end and the number of my days, that I may know how short my time is. You have made my days but a hand's breadth, and my lifetime is as nothing in your sight. Truly, even those who stand upright are but a breath. We walk about like a shadow, and in vain we are in turmoil. We heap up riches and cannot tell who will gather them. And now, what is my hope? Truly, my hope is even in you. Deliver me from all my transgressions, and do not make me the taunt of the fool. I fell silent, and did not open my mouth, for surely it was your doing. Take away your plague from me, I am consumed by the blows of your hand. With rebukes for sin you punish us, like a moth you consume our beauty. Truly, everyone is but a breath. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear to my cry. Hold not your peace at my tears, for I am but a stranger with you, a wayfarer as all my forebears were. Turn your gaze from me, that I may be glad again, before I go my way and am no more. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. So, our reading from Daniel chapter 9 verses 4 to 19 I prayed to the Lord my God and made confession saying our Lord great and awesome God keeping covenant and steadfast love with those who love you and keep your commandments we have sinned and done wrong acted wickedly and rebelled turning aside from your commandments and ordinances we have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes and our ancestors, and to all the people of the land. Righteousness is on your side, O Lord, but open shame, as at this day, falls on us, the people of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and all Israel, those who are near and those who are far away, in all the lands to which you have driven them, because of the treachery that they have committed against you. Open shame, O Lord, falls on us, our kings, our officials and our ancestors, because we have sinned against you. To the Lord our God belong mercy and forgiveness, for we have rebelled against him, and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God by following his laws, which he set before us by his servants the prophets. All Israel has transgressed your law and turned aside, refusing to obey your voice. 
So the curse and the oath written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, have been poured out upon us because we have sinned against you. He has confirmed his words, which he spoke against, which he spoke against us and against our rulers, by bringing upon us a calamity so great that what has been done against Jerusalem has never been done before under the whole heaven. Just as it is written in the law of Moses, all this calamity has come upon us. We did not entreat the favour of the Lord our God, turning from our iniquities and reflecting on his fidelity. So the Lord kept watch over this calamity until he brought it upon us. Indeed, the Lord our God is right in all that he has done, for we have disobeyed his voice. And now, O Lord our God, who brought your people out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and made your name renowned even to this day, we have sinned, we have done wickedly. O Lord, in view of all your righteous acts, let your anger and wrath, we pray, turn away from your city Jerusalem, your holy mountain. Because of our sins and the iniquities of our ancestors, Jerusalem and your people have become a disgrace among all our neighbours. Now therefore, O our God, listen to the prayer of your servant and to his supplication, and for your sake, Lord, let your face shine upon your desolated sanctuary. Incline your ear, O my God, and hear. Open your eyes and look at our desolation and the city that bears your name. We do not present our supplication before you on the ground of our righteousness, but on the ground of your great mercies. O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, listen and act and do not delay. For your own sake, O my God, because your city and your people bear your name. Okay. Um, following our usual pattern, I will... Um, uh, read the reading again and please use the comments box to share any reflections if you're familiar with the scripture anything that's perhaps particularly inspiring or particularly troubling for you um, if you are familiar but something new has jumped out and surprised you uh, please share that or if you're not familiar with the scripture please uh, share what what strikes you about it um, so Yes, please use the comments box and I'll read it again and then we'll have share a brief time of reflection. Daniel chapter 9 verses 4 to 19. I prayed to the Lord my God and made confession, saying, Our Lord, great and awesome God, keep in covenant and steadfast love with those who love you and keep your commandments. We have sinned and done wrong acted wickedly and rebelled, turning aside from your commandments and ordinances. We have not listened to, our ser to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes and our ancestors and to all the people of the land. Righteousness is on your side, O Lord, but open shame as at this day falls upon us, the people of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem and all Israel, those who are near and those who are far away, in all the lands to which you have driven them, because of the treachery that they committed against you. Open shame, O Lord, falls on us, our kings, our officials and our ancestors, because we have sinned against you. To the Lord our God belong mercy and forgiveness, for we have rebelled against him and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God by following his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. All Israel has transgressed your law and turned aside, refusing to obey your voice. So the curse and the oath written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, have been poured out upon us because we have sinned against you. He has confirmed his words which he spoke against us and against our rulers by bringing upon us a calamity so great that what has been done against Jerusalem has never been done before under the whole heaven. Just as it is written in the law of Moses, all this calamity has come upon us. We did not entreat the favour of the Lord our God turning from our iniquities and reflecting on his fidelity. So the Lord kept watch over this calamity until he brought it upon us. Indeed, the Lord our God is right in all that he has done, for we have disobeyed his voice. And now, O Lord our God, who brought your people out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and made your name renowned even to this day, we have sinned, we have done wickedly. 
O Lord, in view of all your righteous acts, let your anger and wrath, we pray, turn away from your city, Jerusalem, your holy mountain. Because of our sins and the iniquities of our ancestors, Jerusalem and your people have become a disgrace among all our neighbours. Now, therefore, O our God, listen to the prayer of your servant and to his supplication. And for your own sake, Lord, let your face shine upon your desolated sanctuary. Incline your ear, O my God, and hear. Open your eyes and look at our desolation and the city that bears your name. We do not present our supplication before you on the ground of our righteousness, but on the ground of your great mercies. O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, listen and act and do not delay. For your own sake, O my God, because your city and your people bear your name. So, um... Vivian says uh, that Daniel, the book of Daniel, is now dealing with um, Israel. Uh, a lot of uh, this scripture has thus far been focused on um, the uh, forces that um, have occupied Israel and exiled the ruling class of Israel. Um, uh, yeah, Yvonne says, what about those who are, are victims of this and uh, I think that's a that's a really good point one thing it made me think um is that it's not it's 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 easy to to interpret this language as a kind of transactional thing um you do this and God will be good to you and I, I don't think it's quite like that I think I think that the the law um the law that that God gave through through Moses is is that if you live in this way um it will be well living in in the way that God calls us to live if you see what I mean it's not a simple you do good and I will give good stuff to you it's that actually you won't need to you won't even question it because this is the way we should live this is the way that's best for us to live um if you see what i mean that that might seem quite um that might seem slightly unclear but yeah it's not a it's not a transactional thing it's this is the way we should live because this is we wouldn't then bad stuff wouldn't happen if you see what i mean um but it's it's hard and that's what grace is about i think and this is what i think daniel is praying for um the the grace to to live in the way god wants us to live um and actually it speaks to what yvonne is talking about because actually um when people who have human power um don't rule with justice and equality and don't look to god um other people suffer and innocent people suffer um janet says daniel's very uh, familiar with the law and his prayers echo the Psalms exactly that's one of the reasons I chose Psalm 39 as well um, uh, because it feels like a psalm of loss and wandering and um, it really speaks to actually I think how we can all often feel Lord how do you want us to live how should I live and that sense of yeah and that sense of being that that lost sheep that needs guidance um yeah sally points out it's relevant to um this country today and maybe many countries actually um the the feeling of um separation from people around us the feeling of antagonism between nations um yeah uh, Rosalind says that, you know, the, the idea of mercy and forgiveness as opposed to the visible power of God that is a very, there's, and there's actually a kind of juxtaposition of that because, of course, we get mention of the exodus in this passage, um, the demonstrable power of God um, on the world uh, and mercy and forgiveness being, I suppose, another, another side of that book, a kind of something different there i think actually 
it's the power of God, but we understand that differently, I think. Um, yes, I'm not sure about the, the kind of redaction history of this text. Um, well, Kath says, what's Israel's great sin? Well, if, if you read, yeah, it's it, partly that. If you read the book of Kings and Chronicles, uh, the books of Kings and Chronicles um, and, and Samuel, um, just about the what it is, Kath, I think, is it's the mistakes that we still make now as humans. Um, uh, the mistakes we make all the time. Um, I think that actually... Yeah, as Janet says, lack of justice for the poor. Um, the law of God, Kath, is always described as doing, um, looking to the, the widow and the orphan is the image used. Um, it's not living in, not, not treating others as God treats us, which is with mercy and forgiveness. And stuff goes wrong. And that's what I mean by... Um, it's not like we do good and God does good to us. It's like if we live in the right way, that's th that's the good stuff. You know what I mean? Treating people right. Um, that's that's the good stuff. That's the way God wants us to live. And, you know, bad stuff doesn't tend to happen when we all treat each other like that. Trouble is we don't. Trouble is people in authority and we 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 find it hard to live like that, I think. And that's why we need the grace of God. And that's why Daniel is praying for the grace of God, because we need God to help us to live like that, I think. Um, I also wonder what you all think about. Um, so. I, I, I think that one thing that is interesting to reflect on is why is this text being written? We often talk, and it's often been said in the comments quite rightly, history is written by the victors. You know, we hear of Israel's great victories. But of course, scripture makes clear again and again and again, it's not because of Israel that these victories happen. Um, it's because of God. Israel, Jacob is not special. Abraham is not special. Um, uh, the people of Israel are not special. And so God chooses them. They are special because God chose them. The people of Israel are just like you and me, but they are chosen by God to so God makes God's self known in creation. It's part of that sacramental nature of God. It's part of the it's part of Emmanuel. It's the it's the incarnational God who is with us. Um, but that doesn't mean they always get it right and God is with us like God is with the people of Israel and we get it wrong and the people of Israel get it wrong. Um, and that's why we need grace. That's why we pray for grace. This is why Daniel prays. And I think it's interesting that history written by the victors, this is not something that makes the victors look very good, is it? This is not something that makes the nation of Israel seem like some kind of great and victorious and all knowledgeable and all powerful nation. This prayer seems like a sincere prayer for grace um, because of the very fallible um, acknowledging the our fallen nature as humans, really. Um, and so, OK, Ella says, yeah, was not God with other people all the time. I think that's right. I think that one way, though, that God speaks, God speaks into creation and God speaks of being with us is through the people of Israel but that's not because they are some great people um quite the contrary and I think this prayer makes that clear um you know this is a, a prayer for grace um from uh, a position of difficulty and um confusion and uncertainty and I think that that is heartening um, there's plenty more we could say about this, but we must wind up our reflection here. Um, thank you once again for all the good wishes and for the four candles joke. Um, excellent, excellent candle jokes. Um, please continue to share your reflections on those readings, um, on that prayer, that huge prayer for grace by Daniel, um, as we enter our time of prayer. Um, please um, also add 
your um, intercessions, people and things you would like praying for in our comments box and we will gather and hold all of those things up to God in prayer. So let us pray. We ask for clarity to choose the wisest path, the path of liberation and compassion. We ask for abundance in our hearts, the strength to end poverty and bitterness. We ask for passion to speak truth to power, to claim the dignity of every child under the sun. We ask for the light that feeds all living things, to turn our hearts to the healing of the earth. God of the Church, we pray for the Church in the Diocese of Liverpool, for our bishops, Paul and Beverly, for all in ministry in the Diocese, lay and ordained. We pray for all church communities around our city, around our diocese, around the whole country and the whole world. We pray that despite our mistakes and despite our inability to follow the way you show us, that through your grace you make yourself known, that you are with us, that you don't give up on us. And that you will lead us and call us into the transformation of your love. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the world, we pray for that same transforming love to be known in places where there is conflict. Where nations are antagonistic towards other nations. We continue to pray for Belarus. And we pray for the United States of America as they approach the presidential election. We pray for your spirit of wisdom and peace and justice for all those in authority in those countries. And we pray for the most vulnerable. Those who are innocent and suffer when there is turmoil amongst those who wield worldly power. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all people, we pray for all those who are attending universities at the moment and are experiencing very local lockdowns in halls of residence. We pray for all those who work at universities, teach and minister there or work in any way, who, who are helping to clean and keep these places safe. We pray for your spirit of strength and comfort in what must be a terrible time of anxiety and uncertainty. Going away to university is uncertain enough, especially for the first time. And we pray that you comfort and strengthen by your presence those who are experiencing added anxiety at this time. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of those who suffer. We pray for the rise in coronavirus cases um, around Merseyside at this time. We pray for all those who are affected, all those who are being hospitalised. We pray for all family and friends of those who have tested positive, who are having to self-isolate. We pray your blessing on them all. We thank you that you are with them all in their suffering and their anguish. And we pray that your transforming love will bring them to the other side. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, we pray for all those who have died recently. We pray for the increasing number of deaths from coronavirus as cases rise. And we pray for all those who have died and whose families are worrying about further restrictions um, on funerals and that paying their respects may be um, affected by the rising cases. We pray for comfort and strength for all those who mourn and that they may be able to celebrate the lives of their loved ones in a way that seems fitting and that helps provide some closure. We pray for all those in funeral ministry, in the diocese and in the whole region. 
God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Amen. And so we gather our prayers together in the words that Jesus taught us. And please use any version of the Lord's Prayer you enjoy using in any language. So we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the outrageous welcome of the Father accept us for who we are. May the incarnation of the word touch and hold us close. May the wandering of the Spirit help us risk ourselves for love. And the blessing of God, the womb of creation, the word of life, the wind of change, be with us and rest upon our homes and the homes of all those in our communities, now and always. Amen. In the circle of God's love we are one. The circle is never broken. In the light of God's welcome we are one. The light never goes out. Let children teach us the wisdom of play. Let neighbours teach us the gentleness of care. May the circle surround us when we are apart. May the light draw us together again. Amen. Well, thank you all so much um, for joining us um, today. Um, it's just such a pleasure and a privilege to be here and pray with you and to share this time with you. Um, we will have morning prayer at 9.15 as usual tomorrow. Um, I think it's Miranda leading that tomorrow. And at 12.15 we will have our um, Taste of God congregation on Zoom. So please look at the um, last parish email for um, Zoom details for the link there. And that will be led by Joyce, member of our congregation. Uh, and we're looking at... Um, uh, Jesus's uh, interactions with uh, women in the gospel accounts. Um, so yes, 9.15 prayer, morning prayer tomorrow, 12.15 taste of God, uh, 9.15 prayer every day, Monday to Friday. Um, really looking forward to sharing that time of prayer with you for the rest of the week. Thank you once again and thank you once again for all the, the kind wishes and for the, the good wishes uh, for um, Laura's husband Mikey who was priested on Friday uh, we really appreciate all your prayers and good wishes at this time of transition in ministry um, and I couldn't imagine a better place and um, a more wonderful community to be um, growing into this ministry in so thank you all have a wonderful day wherever you are and whatever you're doing take care God bless and see you soon bye